There's Venus. Look how bright it is. Well, it looks like we've got another clear night on our hands here in the backyard, a really cool sunset. I've got some new astronomy apps on my phone that give me an even better forecast than the ones I was used to. My favorite one is Astrospheric. If you haven't checked that one out, you should. I just made a post on my website about the best stargazing and astronomy apps that I've found. There's a whole bunch of new ones I never knew about, so really excited about that. We've got a 50% full moon tonight, so first quarter. And there's some other really cool things happening tonight. I've got two rigs set up, but also there's an ISS pass around nine o'clock, 9 p.m. So it is five to eight right now. So in about, about an hour, we'll see an ISS pass and it's going through a really clear patch of sky in my yard. So uh, I'll be able to film that, which is really cool. I don't catch many International Space Station passes. Otherwise, as I said, I've got two rigs set up. The big one, the EQ-8R and the Esprit 150 will be capturing more data uh, in H-Alpha and M81. So it's just a project I'm working on, but the other rig is something new and exciting and I'll share that shortly. Wait, I said two rigs, right? I meant three. Hey. Did you read all the nice comments people said on YouTube? Yeah. They were pretty impressed. They were very nice. You went eight for 10, I can't believe it. Nine for 10. This one hasn't come out in a while. It's the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro with the Esprit 100. I've got the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro Color camera, the OPT triad filter, and a 61 millimeter guide scope on top. This telescope has a focal length of 550 millimeters at f5.5. In front of the ASI 533MC Pro is the Starazona 0.65 reducer. And then I've also got the filter slider drawer that houses my two inch filter, the OPT Triad. That's a quad band filter that does its best to ignore almost all wavelengths of light pollution. It's April now, so we're right into galaxy season but we will have an hour left of Orion. It's just gonna pass through this area in the far side of my yard. Oh, what was that? Oh, I think it was just a robin. What's really cool and kind of special about tonight is that I'll actually be photographing a planet, which doesn't happen very much on this channel, the dazzling planet Venus. The reason for that is it's coming very close to the Pleiades star cluster. It's gonna get better in the coming days. I think two or three days from now, it's right inside Pleiades, but it might not be clear that night. So this might be the best chance I get. It's gonna be over here somewhere. That's why I'm set up over in this corner. Thanks to some inspiration from the crew over at the Astro Backyard Facebook page, I was able to add a custom landscape to Stellarium. So I actually have the, all of the obstructions in my backyard set in Stellarium. So when I cruise around and plan my night, I see the two cedars over there. I see my giant and walnut tree. All the obstructions are there so I can really plan my night out accurately. And it really got me thinking, man, it would be nice to get rid of that giant tree back there. I actually did a custom version where I cut the tree down just to see what it would look like. And oh man, it got the wheels spinning. So here's the scene here with Venus, with a few clouds coming through, Orion to the left. The Pleiades is right in there. And with this camera I've got right here, the 7D Mark II, I'm shooting 30 second subs at ISO 400. You probably can't see it there, but I framed up Pleiades and Venus in the frame here. And I've got the Rokinon 135 millimeter F2, which happens to be the perfect focal length for this scenario. So it's creating kind of a cool effect because of these clouds, just kind of trying to find a, the silver lining of this situation here. But uh, it's obviously, as you can see, a thin layer of clouds going by. And I'll take my 10 second exposure.
Okay, in about 30 seconds, the International Space Station is gonna come cruising across the sky here in the background. Uh, 9, 11 p.m. here, it's supposed to do, make its pass. Hopefully that cloud cover isn't so thick that you can't actually see it. Hopefully you see a nice glow through the clouds. Very, very excited. I can see using my app that it's in the sky now and it should be coming up very soon if we can see it through those clouds. I see it. I can see it, can you see it too? It's right there. There it is, you can see it coming through the trees. The International Space Station. Look at that. Right on time. You can see it through a little gap in the clouds here. Look how bright it's getting. So cool. It's gonna get out of frame in a second, so I'll move the camera. Let's hope it gets a little brighter as it goes through the sucker holes. Oh, there it is. Yep, there it is. Very cool. I've never shared an ISS pass on this channel before. This is a, a groundbreaking moment. I'm so excited to share this moment with all you guys. The International Space Station. At this point, you might be wondering, what happened with the first rig I set up? Did I take any pictures with that? Well, no, I didn't. I tore it all down, it was cloudy. But it's clear tonight, so it's Thursday now, and I'm shooting the Pinwheel Galaxy on the Esprit 100 and the ASI 533, except I switched the filter out for an Optolong L Pro because it's broadband galaxy target. And then the EQ8R with the Esprit 150, I'm shooting the Whirlpool Galaxy, which is really exciting because I'm shooting an RGB to finish a color project there. So if you wanna see these pictures, just follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I post all the time. And uh, yeah, sorry if the video was a little disjointed, but that's what happens when the clouds come along. And my floodlight just went out. Clear skies.
Hey. Hi. Can you make me a coffee?